I own an Evolve GTR Carbon, and I've been riding it on and off for the last two to three years. And before getting it, I had read a lot of stuff about how the brakes lock up on some people's boards. And I've always been prepared for that to happen to me. Over these years riding the Evolve skateboard, I've really enjoyed it. It is a really high-end quality board. The brakes are touchy if you go over 18 miles per hour. In this instance, it was not just the brakes fault for what just happened to me. As you can see, my collarbone snapped into a Z shape and I've already had the surgery to get it repaired. Lots of screws and bolts in there with a plate and it is the first time I've ever broken a collarbone. And let me tell you, in a break, like the way that I had it with the Z shape and it jabbing out as well as shattering and having floating pieces all around in there, it was not fun. In this video, I'm gonna go over with you what happened to me and what I feel could be improved upon on the GTR, which from what I understand has already been improved upon on the new Evolve Hayden board. Last Monday, I took my Evolve out and I was riding by the lake, a spot you've probably seen me ride in many other videos. I wasn't doing anything crazy, a little bit of carving here and there, but when the accident happened, it was actually on my way home and I was just pretty much riding straight. Now, before I get into the details of what actually happened and how I went flying off my board, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the rumors and what some people out there have experienced with their Evolve GTR boards. This is the controller for the GTR. It has a throttle on the bottom and your brake is on the top. Now, whenever you hit the brake, it overpowers the throttle at least in the default settings. That means if you're riding along and you happen to bump the brake into something, the brake will actually activate even though you have the throttle down. There's a safety trigger when you're at zero that comes on a default. You have to hold that before you can pull the throttle to go. The top screen tells you your miles per hour and some other features like how much charges on the battery and things like that. Now I do highly recommend wearing the wrist strap because as you can see, my controller is not broken and I did have it connected to my wrist strap. If you drop this thing in concrete, it typically wants to break in half right at the seam. As you can probably tell, at least in the bottom here, there's sort of the point where it comes together and it will just snap in half right there and your innards sort of come out and there's some springs and things like that. And a lot of the times you can't just put it back together and you have to buy a new controller and these controllers are not cheap. You increase your odds of not breaking your controller if you're wearing that wrist strap. A lot of people out there have what is known as the breaking issue on the Evolve. Some probably do and some probably actually have what happened to me, which we will go over shortly after I finish explaining what the issues with the actual board are. Some people ride these boards and claim that the brakes actually just go and lock up on them. Like they're just going along the brakes for no reason, just lock up. And if you're going 18 to 21 miles per hour and the brakes lock up to zero, it is almost impossible to run that off as I just found out just a few days ago. And believe me, I've been riding skateboards and snowboards my entire life. I've run out of a lot of skateboards when they hit a rock and you're cruising and you just run out of it or you roll. That's your next step, which we'll get into what I did shortly. But it is really hard to run out of something when you go in those speeds and it just stops on you drastically. I'm not trying to discredit anyone in this video that has had a full lockup for no reason other than the board just having faulty electronics. I'm sure something like that could happen to someone out there. But I think the majority of users out there probably experienced something like what I did and it just came suddenly and you weren't prepared. Even though in your head, you think you're prepared to be able to, to counterbalance and be ready for that lockup or to run off the board or whatever. In a real life situation, no matter how much experience you do have on these boards, it is very, very possible to get jacked up. There are different modes on the controller that you can set up and you can actually customize it too. One of them is eco, which goes a much slower speed. Then there's pro mode and that goes uh, about the same top end as the GTR mode, but it has a slower acceleration. So it's not like quite as jarring when you go. If you don't have a lot of experience on snowboards and skateboards, I would recommend just using one of those first two modes and staying away from the GTR mode altogether because it is a little jarring if you don't know what you're doing. When you're going under 16 miles per hour, even 17 miles per hour, when you hit the brake up top, it's 
a gradual slowdown. It's not like a jarring uh, stop. It, it wants to just do what you think it should do, which is it sort of slowly kicks in on the brake and gradually gets more as you push the brake down a little further. But when you're going over 18 miles per hour, 21 miles per hour, and you hit the brake, it's completely different than when you're going under those speeds. What happens with the brakes when you're going faster and you hit the brake, it has a quick engagement where the wheels tend to lock up and it gives you sort of a forward kick. But if you're doing it on purpose, you can just barely tap it a little bit and you're prepared for it. And then you readjust and then you can gradually slow down once it's initiated its lock-in phase. Now, if you're not used to it and you're not expecting a board to do that, and you go straight into those higher speeds and you just sort of hit the brake, that could throw you off. Or even if you accidentally hit the brake while you have the gas on, whether it be your thumb or something else, and you're not expecting it and you're just cruising around, even with just the little bit of hit could also potentially throw you off. From what I understand, that is what they've fixed on the new Hayden models. So when you hit the brake, even at those higher speeds, because the Hayden goes, I think, over 30 miles per hour, you actually get a gradual in on the brake, and then it gets stronger as you go, instead of a stronger brake and then gradual as you go. I think that you can customize how strong and the curve of your brake line on the new controller, which is more durable than this one also. I am hoping to go to the Evolve headquarters in Carlsbad, California next week. So I'm gonna be checking out the Hayden. I won't be able to really test it too much because this surgery was just the day before I filmed this video. But if you are interested in seeing the Evolve headquarters and seeing some opinions on the Hayden versus the GTR, and maybe I'll even be able to talk to some of the higher ups there at the headquarters about the issues that I'm going to explain to you that I had with the GTR. Now let's get back to the story of what happened to me a few days ago prior to getting this collarbone surgery and see if maybe that could be what happened to some of you out there that have been thrown off your board. If you think it could have been what happened to me or maybe it was just from the slight touch and you were going over 18 miles per hour and it had that jarring stop, let me know in the comments below. I'm actually really curious because some people swear up and down that for some reason the power went off on the remote and the brakes locked up. Early on when I first got this board, I actually turned the power off on my remote and the wheels just spin. They don't just stop and throw you off, or at least for me they didn't. When I first wrecked, so much went through my head as I'm flying through the air and trying to run this out before I tumbled. I actually was like in the air going, oh crap, my brakes just locked up. It did it, it did it to me. It finally happened to me after two years. I can't believe it actually happened to me. Looking back at what was happening, what I was doing, the video I was filming at the time, I was able to put two and two together and figure out that it was actually user error. I can't say that if it didn't have that quick jarring effect, that my user error might have been correctable by me, the user, and I might not be sitting here with a broken collarbone today. Now, before we get into this story and I tell you step-by-step step what actually happened to me, if you are new here, please take a minute to hit the subscribe button and click the little thumbs up so that I know that you're enjoying these story time one-on-one -on -one moments like this, just me and you. So as I was saying earlier in this video, I was taking my skateboard, riding it out to run some errands, and I was headed back by the lake. I wasn't being crazy in any way, shape, or form when I locked up and got thrown off my board. I was riding along with my iPhone 13 Pro Max, getting some footage for my Instagram stories. Instagram stories is a vertical format, so I'm holding the phone like this. I've got the controller in the other hand. I can't really show you, so I had the phone out like this controller in the other hand like this, no big deal. I'll normally film a vlog for this channel or a side-by-side -side or some kind of review of the products using the GoPro 10 or a 360 camera, which is just out on a stick. And God, do I wish that's what I was doing the other day because I don't think this would have happened because I would have kept the thing in my hand the entire time instead of trying to put it back in my pocket. And I'm pretty sure putting this back in my pocket was the catalyst and what caused this. It all happened so fast 
that I really am not 100% sure if this is actually the reason for it, but it makes more logical sense than just the brakes completely locking up. When the board came to a sudden stop, and when I say sudden, it was 20, 21 miles per hour to zero in literally a second. I went flying off the board, landed directly on my feet, ran it out as long as I could. I got three to four steps in, and all this time my head is spinning with thoughts. It's crazy how many thoughts you have in a millisecond when you're about to slam into pavement. As I'm running out those three or four steps, I'm thinking to myself, oh God, my little legs can't run this damn fast. Can I get to the grass? Can I roll? Am I gonna be okay? I don't want to slam into the ground. I did not wear my helmet. It was just such a beautiful day. I didn't wear my helmet and I didn't want to hit my head. Also during this time, I'm wondering what the hell did the brakes lock up like I've always been warned they could. I cannot break myself because of my job. I use both my arms and hands. I'm a tattoo artist up here in Summit County at Summit Inc. Tattoo. And now I'm out of work for at least two weeks. It is amazing how many thoughts go through your head that quickly. So as I'm hitting that third and fourth step, I realize I'm about to just face plant. So I try to tuck and roll into the grass, which is giving me road rash here, road rash over here, and road rash on my knee. None of my clothes got rips in it or even a tear of any kind. When you're snowboarding, you're going down different slopes. The faster you're going, usually the steeper the slope is. But when you fall snowboarding because of that angle, you're able to sort of somersault and get your, yourself tucked in there. And it's a little bit of a softer ground, unless you live on the East Coast and it's just like ice everywhere. You can usually roll and not mess yourself up and you just pop right back up on your snowboard and you can keep going. But for me on the skateboard, being on that concrete path or asphalt path, when I tucked and tried to roll so that I could head into the grass, oh, I wish I had hit the grass instead. There's a much better chance I wouldn't be broken right now. That initial hit, I just heard the loudest crunch and then I rolled and then ended up in the grass at the end of the roll. But that initial hit caused all this. The board rolled off into the grass on the other side, no damage at all to the board. Amazingly, the controller was fine and I'm laying there on my back in immense pain. Carefully, I'm feeling my collarbone, putting pressure on it to make sure everything's okay, thinking to myself, okay, I just need a minute, I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna ride it home and I'll see how I'm feeling. As I'm laying there, a biker that was on the path saw the wreck, stopped over and asked if I was okay, wanted to see if I wanted an ambulance, and I'm not able to talk to them properly at that point. So if that biker ever sees this, Thank you so much for sticking it out, sitting there and waiting for me to come to my senses to let you call an ambulance. Now I'm the kind of guy that never rides in an ambulance. I think the, the price of an ambulance, unless it's a dire emergency, is ridiculous. And I've also found out that the shocks in an ambulance are absolute crap because every little bit of movement I had on this thing was excruciating. So as I'm sitting there in the grass, I try to sit up and when I went to push up, it's crazy. Every action you do actually uses muscles and tendons in this, even if you don't use this arm to try to get up. And every movement just made it hurt so bad that I had to lay back down and I started feeling again and I could feel multiple pieces all over the place, raised and just all out of whack and a big crack and a line in it right here. It's what they called a Z break. And the, like I said earlier, there was some floating pieces. There was more floating pieces actually in it when the doctor opened me up than showed on the x-ray. Between the z break and all the floating pieces, that's why it was so extremely painful on this particular one. I've known people who broke their collarbones in different spots with a clean break that had very little pain. And instead of getting surgery, they just set their collarbone and they just let it heal. Amazingly, I didn't hit my head. I think part of that is because I took my right hand and sort of blocked myself as I rolled and um, I jarred and this knuckle on my thumb is all bruised up, but it isn't broken. They did x-ray it just to be sure. So after laying there for God knows how long, another biker comes up, asks if they can help too. I realize with the way that I'm breaking a sweat and the way that I'm like going in and out that uh, there's no way I'm gonna ride this home and then drive myself to the hospital to get checked out. It was so bad, me, someone who's super against ambulance rides and going to the hospital, decided I would take an ambulance ride 
and go to the hospital. The ambulance got there really quick. Quite a few paramedics came around. I was in and out of it. Of course, they're checking my head and checking everything else to make sure nothing else seemed broken. And I just kept repeating to them, hey, this this is it, man. This is, this is what's broken. If you guys can help me get standing up, I could probably stand up and get to the gurney to get into the back of the ambulance without you having to do the hard board underneath me. So they got behind me, helped raise me up so I wouldn't have to use all these tendons and muscles. I got up, got on the bed, and they put me into the ambulance. Now before I got on the gurney, luckily I know a few of the police officers that work up here because there was just a crowd over me and uh, you know how people are. They like to see what's going on when there's an injury. So there was a big crowd of people, a lot of paramedics, and then all of a sudden through this haze of people, a buddy of mine that I tattoo who works for the Dillon PD walked up and said, hey, I recognize that tattoo. I found out later that when he first walked up, he didn't know it was me, and he just was walking up and it looked like I was dead. It was really nice to see some face that I actually recognize there. It helps sort of bring me back around and stay coherent. So they get me back to the hospital, they do the x-rays, they confirm that I was right, that this is broken. And then I get set up to go see the surgeon who did the surgery for me, thank God. This is where I'm gonna now tell you what I think actually happened and the brakes didn't just lock up on their own. If you remember earlier, I was talking about filming with my phone and putting it back in my pocket. I was sliding it back in my right hand pocket. I am not sure because I'm pretty sure I was filming in this hand or I was filming in this hand. I think somehow during that time when I slid my phone in my pocket, since it's in my right hand pocket, I must have switched it to this hand to put it in my pocket and held it something like this and went into my pocket and somehow bumped the brake against my leg. I don't know how, because even now as I'm doing this, if I slid it down like, like this, it wouldn't put the brake on. But it's the only thing that makes sense to me is somehow when I put my phone in my pocket, I must have put my brake on by pushing it against my leg, which not just gave it the little jerk, but brought it to a complete stop or close to a complete stop almost instantly. Or maybe, I just bumped it and it jarred it because I was in the process of putting my phone in my pocket. I wasn't prepared for it and I just went flying. I really don't know 100%, but I do think it was user error and I did bump the brake in some way, shape or form. My friend picked up my board and my controller and I'm still mind blown that the controller isn't broken. So that's pretty much it. I think it was user error mixed with the fact that on the GTR in higher speeds, when they first turn on over that 18 miles per hour, they do have a, a very jarring stop for just a second until it goes into that smoother band to have a gradual, nice slowdown. I would think this is something that Evolve could update in a firmware, but from what I understand, they have not done that yet. If so, I've not found it. That is something when I go to the Evolve headquarters, I wanna to talk to them about and see if they're going to do something like that. They can sit there all day and deny that there's a complete lockup, and that might be the case, but they cannot deny that over a certain speed, the board does have a very jarring band that it hits before it actually slows down smoothly. And I personally believe that that's probably what has happened to many of us who have gone flying off the board. I take full responsibility for this. I should have probably not been using my phone to film as I was riding, but over years and years, you start to get very comfortable with something you do that often. And when you get that comfortable, that's when you can have a lapse of judgment where all of a sudden you do something for a millisecond that's stupid, and then you pay the consequences pretty much for life. Luckily, I am expected to heal fully at this moment. I'll go into the doctor in a couple of weeks, and in that six to eight weeks healing, I won't be riding the skateboard or the scooter and the other things that you've seen on the channel. We'll probably be focusing more on filming with drones, setting your cameras up, and just going on adventures and filming some cool places because I can still go do things. I've been okay to do my trip to Disneyland and go check out Star Wars Land out in California. And I'll be comparing that footage with the Disneyland that I experienced in Florida. So there's still gonna be lots of content on the channel to come between drones, adventures, and just teaching you how to use 360 cameras because editing and filming with a 360 camera is just so much fun. And honestly, filming with a 360 camera for the electric skateboard, snowboarding, things like that, there is extra steps. It does take longer, but you can get shots 
that you just cannot get with like a regular GoPro or even a phone. If you made it this far in the video, leave me a comment if you've ever wrecked in yours and if you're blaming it on a full lockup or if you think maybe, just maybe, you might have tapped the brake when you were going over those speeds and you were flying and weren't able to catch yourself because it is really hard to run off a 21 mile per hour stop. Accidents always tend to happen when you become the most comfortable. It's just life, you know? It gives you lemons, you make lemonade, you deal with it, you move forward. And if you do wanna help support the channel and help support some of the bills, make sure you uh, check out the stores in the description below where I have links where you can buy shirts with my own original art as well as stickers and things to help support the channel. I am going to be selling my Evolve GTR since I'm not gonna be able to ride it this summer. And I'm going to be looking into possibly getting a Hayden or another board. If you have a board suggestion that you think I should check out besides the Hayden, let me know in those comments below. I'm not at a place where these companies send me boards yet. You know, maybe Evolve will change their mind whenever I go and talk to them about this and they want me to make a video talking about the Hayden to show how much safer it actually is compared to the GTR with the braking issues. Who knows? Anything could happen. I appreciate you watching and staying with me to the end. Have a great day, everyone. And if you do have a crazy board story of any kind, share it down in the comments below so we can go back and forth and read each other's uh, crazy experiences. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.